everyone. My name is Jeanette Ramos and I'm the founder of It Takes a Village Housing. I will see all of you on April 28th in Chicago for the Power of We Symposium, where I'd love to share with you the story about a single mother raising two sons in the city of Camden. I will share my journey with you from where I was to where I am, because it definitely takes a village. I'll see you in Chicago. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Christopher Roush, your No Excuses Coach here with a special announcement to say, hey, listen, guess who's gonna be in Chicago, April 28th, 2022, at the Stan Mansion. Christopher Roush, your No Excuses Coach, is gonna be there, and I'm excited because this is all about the teens. This is all about taking professional speakers with amazing stories and coming live and pouring into the teens and creating an amazing life-changing event that helps them walk away with a lot of tools to arm themselves to have a kick-ass, awesome life. So I'm excited to be there at the Stan Mansion. It is the Power of We Symposium. There it is on the screen, www.thepowerwesymposium.com. Check it out. Myself, Lauren Michaels Harris is going to be there. Dom Pissett's going to be there. Jason Cisneros is going to be there. So many other impactful speakers are going to be there sharing their hearts and their wisdom to make this world a better place through those kids. So check us out April 28th. Go to Chicago. Be there. Join me there. I'd love to buy you a drink and just have a great conversation. No excuses. We'll see you there. Power we April 28th. Cheers. The power of we was a way of inclusion, a way of inviting anyone who needed or wanted a place to belong. It was just very clear to me that this was something that would really benefit the young folks right here. And to be able to give them a different perspective that I know where they come from, I know what they're experiencing because I was there too and uh, letting them know that there's different actions that they can take that'll lead to a different destiny. We really needed to hear that. In order to change our community, we needed to hear that. And they are inspired to invest in making it happen. That's powerful. Because it is. That's right. Show me your soul, everybody. That's our theme right here. You know where you're at. 
If you don't, you will before too long. Welcome to today's installment of Bathroom Moments. And I'm your host, Lauren Michaels Harris. Yes, show me your soul and I'll show you mine. That's a promise. That's the theme of our show this year um, because we're, we're, we're all about those illuminated conversations. Can I get an amen? That's right. That's what it is. If we talk it out, we can work it out. Can I get another amen? Okay, ding, 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 ringing the bell. That isn't just a gimmick, although um, some people think it is, but it's not. It's it's twofold. It's an opportunity as well as a reminder. Just like when I ring the bell, you hear that ring, right? It has a ring to it, that bell. Well, so does the truth. And when we have the truth floating around out here, I don't want you to miss it because you're multitasking. I don't want you to miss it because, you know, you're getting up to go get that be- that uh, cup of coffee refill, or whatever it is. Meaningful, meaningful, meaningful. The truth is meaningful. Why? Because the moment we mean something, whether we think it, speak it, or walk it, that thing that we mean becomes immediately meaningful somewhere else in the universe. So... Make sure you mean what you say and say what you mean. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay, what is it? I'm feeling like I'm at a Baptist church in in somewhere down in the South. Um, Who knows, right? Hey, you guys, welcome to the show. She's here every day, has been for six straight years. Lucy McGillicuddy Ricardo's in the house. She is my version of Ed McMahon. She's my little sidekick, aren't you, Lulu? Yes, she is. So, hmm. I'm still sipping on just regular coffee. I decided to take a break from all those flavors. And I forgot what regular coffee tasted like. You would think I was one of those um, Starbucks snobs. I mean, Starbucks people. Sorry, did I say snob? Well, I'm jealous because I stood, I went in once. I said, I'm going I'm to see what this is all about. I went in Starbucks. I wasn't in there, t- what, two minutes. Because I was listening to the people. I said, I'll figure out what they're ordering. And I'll just copy. I'll say, I'll I'll take, and I was going to repeat it. And the woman in front of me said, I don't even remember. It was something like, I'll take a caramel macalaki of frappuccino with extra this with the, it sounded like she was in some other country. I was like, okay, I am out of here. Not to mention, I only had $7 on me. You can't even get a cup of water in there for $7. So not that I don't care for Starbucks, but I'll just stick with my homemade coffee, right? So do you go to Starbucks? And are you hooked on it? Be honest, because I'm trying to figure out what it is about that. And people are proud to let you know that they frequent um, Starbucks. I was on a call yesterday, and the woman started rattling off what was in her cup. And I was like, after six things, six items or ingredients, girl, just say coffee, because I'm lost, I'm lost, right? But anyway, I don't know. I don't know what the big hype is, but it's something. Do you drink Starbucks, Sabrina? I see you back there in the uh, green room. Yes or no? Shake your head. She does. Oh, this ought to be good. So, yeah, that's who's here. Um, another woman who does a million things. How do they do it? Uh, yeah, Sabrina. Sabrina, I hope I'm saying your last name. I should have had you say it for me because I'm like, mm, it could be Protic or it could be. OK, she shook her head because I was like, it's either Pra or Pro. Um, or the eye could change on you. Anyway, uh, Sabrina's here. She's an inspirational business strategist. Now, that's an interesting title. And she's also the founder and CEO of WEE, WE, which stands for Women's Entrepreneurial Empowerment. Uh, she's an author. She's a motivational speaker, a wife, mother, and you're not going to believe it when you see her, but she clearly do I need to see some ID. Um, grandmother who loves um, educating, empowering, and empowering her community as a licensed world-class. Now, see, I'm going to figure out how you get that in there. I'm going to put that in my bio, world-class financial coach. And she's also a certified life coach. So we'll be talking about that. She's got tons of books that she's uh, uh, collaborated on and written and just a whole bunch more. Now, I love this. She's living by the motto. You don't see this too often inside of a bio. Um but people are getting more creative with their bios. I had a guy, you remember a couple of weeks ago, Travis um, Johnson, bringing him back, actually. Um, in his bio at the end, he, he put a list of all his favorite quotes. And I went through them. I was like, wow, I love that. Um, so, hey, thank you for pouring into us. Here's that motto that Sabrina uh, lives by. She says, happiness is the prescription for longevity. And Sabrina enjoys inspiring people to overcome obstacles and to live their very best lives. Doesn't get better than that. Put your hearts together 
um, put your hearts on the screen. We are a collective of, of like-minded people fulfilling that promise where two or more of us comes together. So let's welcome this first timer to bathroom moments by putting some hearts on the screen. Because here she comes, everybody. Sabrina Prote. <laughs> I even love the countdown. I love it. <laughs> How are you? I am wonderful, Lauren. Thanks for having me on Bathroom Moments. You're welcome. And I just don't, I can't get over it. You're like the ninth person I've seen that has their living room decorated exactly like that. How is that? Great, great minds think alike. Uh huh. Women kill me. <laughs> they love those living rooms. Yes, um, we do. See, if I was going to put a green screen thing behind me, I think I'd put some fabulous kitchen. I love me a beautiful kitchen. I know, but everybody, you know, there's only two scenes when you do these virtuals. There's the living room and the bathroom. <laughs> oh, no, not bathroom, kitchen. Oh, kitchen, I was going to say, well, I actually had a guy once um, when he came on. This was before I was on A360. He thought it was bathroom moment and was actually sitting on the toilet. He wasn't using it. He was fully dressed, <laughs> but he was sitting in there. And I was like. Is that a towel rack behind your head? Oh my goodness. It's like, well, yeah. And he goes, should I move over to the tub? I can sit on the edge of the tub. And I was like, why are you even in there? Goes, I'm not supposed to be. It was a real thing. You guys remember that? Sarah McQueen, you probably remember that. About they call years. that they call that on location. That really was on location. Good one. Well, welcome to today's show, Sabrina. Tell everybody where you're at in the world and then fill in between the blanks, maybe some of the things that I left out or just bring them up to par on uh, who you are today. And then we're going to get inside of uh, where little Sabrina got her start. All you. Oh, wonderful. Well, I am Sabrina Prodic. I am a grandmother, a happy grandmother. I am in Brandon, Florida. Normally I tell people <clears throat> Tampa because everybody understands Tampa. They don't know Brandon, but Brandon is a beautiful lifestyle community for families. And I am at a point where I'm just loving life. Lauren, I do want to weigh in on the Starbucks though. This, I learned a new language, macchiato, right? So <laughs> Macchiato, that's for so you know, Starbucks. They invented all these names, right? Of drinks and everything. So I so it's like a new language. It's a different language at Starbucks. I'm but why that. are y'all willing to wait in those long ass lines <laughs> for something at the Star Trek convention? It was the only coffee place in the hotel where we were all at. And that line was around the corner. And I mean, I got to have my coffee when I get up, but mm -mm, I walked two blocks away because I was not willing. And then it was like $11. Yeah. Well, I'm telling you, you get to pick your ingredients. That is what I like. And you can, <laughs> there's a woman, that, but there are just as many men in Starbucks. Okay. So let's, let's clarify that. Starbucks? Pardon me? Are you hooked on it? I mean, is it Starbucks? I'm not hooked on it. I'm not hooked on it, but I have my faves. When I go there, and you can call your order in, by the way, and they can have it waiting on you. So tell the truth. If you're there in line, are you like judging people by what they, or are you listening going, oh, she really right. knows what they are, but oh. Well, you know what? No, I listen to what people order. You can tell the regulars. And actually, when I come, they know what I want. So you know the reg, they do. Well, that means you're a regular. Hello. I'm a regular for what I, or yes. I mean, everybody doesn't order what I order. I like the smoothies, basically. You get your fresh bananas in there. And uh -huh. you um, do that at home too. Me. Okay, so you're a financial um, coach. Yes. World class. And wait, licensed world class. Um, That's right. Right. So how much do you spend a month? Tell the truth and spite the devil. Oh, oh you gonna, uh oh, you're gonna go there. Are you going there with me? Of course. <laughs> well, I will in listen, I will invest in my health. And when I buy my smoothies, it's a healthy smoothie with the bananas, cinnamon, by the way, which lowers the blood sugar. So it's an investment in my health. I will spend maybe ten dollars a week on that because it's investment in my health. 
So that's forty dollars a month. Now let's go back to the part you left out, the macchiatos, because you already <laughs> put that out there. So add those in, and when you add those in, how much are you spend it? That's a every now and then. I don't get the macchiatos often, but on a regular, it's my smoothies, and that's my investment and my help. Now, I, theoretically, I can make it at home for half that price. I'm just going to okay. be honest. You think? A but half why that don't price. You? Why don't you? Ah, uh, convenience on the run. Now I will make my smoothies ahead in the refrigerator, and but I'm on the run, and I have to meet a client, or I have to do an early bathroom moments. Um, early what? Bathroom moments with bathroom Lauren Michaels. Moments. Then I'm gonna go to see early bathroom moments. The early bathroom moments with Lauren Michaels. No, bathroom moments is you in there by yourself. Because <laughs> I, I have bathrobe moments. You said bathroom. Hey, I should have put my robe on this morning, too. I have a beautiful. Wait a minute. Fluffy. You know you said bathroom, right? What did I say? Bathroom. Bathrobe. Ding. Sorry. You need that macchiato, y'all, don't you? I need a bathrobe. We'll wait. Go and get one. We'll be here when you come back. You want my bathrobe? <laughs> no, I was talking about your macchiato so you can quit calling oh, no. bathroom. Well, okay, that's all right. I bet I get the name of your show correct. Thriving <laughs> Women sorry. Talk. Room, robe. <laughs> Thriving Men Talk. No, it's Thriving Don't Women do that. Talk. Don't do that. I know, I know. I don't mess up names. Well, yes, I do. Y'all, don't even start. Listen, Sabrina. Well, first of all, before we get into the modern day you, where did little Sabrina start? And what kind of life did you have growing up? Was it was Silver Spoon, uh, two-parent household, the ideal everything? Or did was there some some bumpy journey in there like so many of us experienced? Talk about it. You know, I grew up with black sand between my toes, and we were happy. We lived on Indian Street, and it was these tin roof houses. Uh, kids running around. Yes, I did. In Indian Street. And I remember I felt so blessed because for lunch, I could have a can of Chef Bayardee. And I was ooh, I used to love it. Don't go, don't. Ooh, girl. A can of Chef Bayardee spaghetti. Talk about spaghettios. Yes, you know, yes. I remember, I remember, and I'm darker than you, but my whole mouth be uh, dyed orange. Ooh, right. <laughs> no. stuff, and don't get that stuff on the counter. Lick this That's food. worse than play. It'll dye up some countertops. Some Chef Boyard. I'm telling you. Yes. But wait a minute. You lost me on black sand. Well, it was dirty. So not black sand as in the beaches of Hawaii. It oh, because really that's what I was picturing. No, no, no. It was just, it was pure dirt. It, there was no moisture in it. Where so was we, this? this was in Fort Myers. It was in Fort Myers in the hood. So <laughs> you know, you're, you're a Floridian all your Floridian. life. Floridian. It's where we could live, and the streets were dirt streets, no grass, everything was sand. And um, my parents, my mom upgraded when they built some homes in a, a certain neighborhood, like these track homes. And that's the first time I had seen concrete floor, because we had a wooden floor. I'd seen concrete floors and green grass. I didn't know what that was. And we were like, to me, like the Jeffersons moving up. Right. <laughs> But How it really wasn't. Family was it a small family, a large family? Family five, uh, three kids. Dad worked two jobs. Mom worked at the school system, so she could be home with us during the, um, reasonable hours after two. There's a lot of stuff happened with the kids at home when mom wasn't there between nine and two. Right, <laughs> right. Okay. But they didn't have babysitters back then. No, right? so people in parents left their kids that. at home. Parents yeah. left their kids at home. Oh yeah, you know that's that's what we did. That's what we did. Now you yeah. have some children. I have two. I have a son and a daughter. Daughter's 31, oh, oh. son's 30. I'm gonna find that through. picture I saw of you and her holding hands wearing those uh oh, you those got that. yes. Show Where that. did you I know, see that? That was um you know, we went for a photo shoot and we didn't even plan to wear those outfits. We showed it with similar outfits. Oh, you that was oh, really? Yes, we didn't plan that. I think that's a some is it on my website? I don't know. I, I I'm looking. You um let me ask you this. Oh, look at all this good stuff. You um you and your daughter, it, it seems like you're besties. 
We are. We have. Well, she keeps me. You know, I'm all about ageless and looking young. She keeps me looking that way because there are times she go, "No, mom, don't wear that." <laughs> uh, uh, don't do, That's don't awesome. do that. Okay. So she keeps me fresh, but we probably talk at least four to five days a week. We are very close. Is she in Florida as well? She's in Miami. Okay. Oh, I'm headed to Miami in May for the first time. Yeah, she's in Miami, and she's also my kind of like my wellness coach. She keeps me in shape, so she makes sure that I get my exercise in. Lauren, I do I do about two miles a day. Walking or running? A combination. So at home, I have a treadmill. I'll do two miles on my treadmill. Then on the weekends, I go for a run. I do a two-mile run on the weekends, and I love every minute of it. So that's my secret, really, to keeping the blood circulating and, and good health and fitness. It's just, you got to keep moving. You, have you to keep really moving. do. You really do. Now, let me ask you, um, you still have, you know, your kids are out on their own. They're on their own. My son's here. He's um, doing very well for himself. He's not okay. married. My daughter's married. There, that's one picture. Look at her. I know. You look like sisters. Uh, that's recent too. I think that was, I went, I went, I, I took that off your dresser. Yeah. I, <laughs> you at your house the other day? I'm just playing. Um, uh, what's, her, what's her name? She's gorgeous. Whitney, Whitney, natural beauty. She's got natural beauty. I just love her so much. I bet. And your son's Very a, dynamic. A, a big old buff. Oh, thing. he's, yeah. He bulks up. He works out. Uh, he's yeah. that nephew though. He's a nephew. That nephew, I saw that piece where you. Oh, that big old, old yeah. Ooh, yeah. About, uh, could we have some honeys in the house when he moved? That's out? a linebacker there. He's huge. He's big, big, big guy. Yeah, three hundred oh. pounds, six four something. So your son has the baby. No, my son doesn't have any children. No, oh, my daughter. Her. My daughter has three. She's got twin girls. They're two years old. That girl we just saw. Yes. She doesn't look like she's had a child at all. Doesn't even look old enough to have one. I know. She's got twin. Know. And she's got a 10-year-old. She's got a 10-year-old. She started early. <laughs> Man, when you guys show up, I bet people are like, what? Grandmother, yeah. mother, they don't. Oh, wow. So, well, you're doing something right. And you're doing a lot of something right. Let's get into that piece that um, ugh, a lot of us don't like to talk about. Just keep exactly. it real. Y'all know it because I don't. I run from my coach when he's like, oh, Lauren, <laughs> next time, next session, we're going to get into your P&Ls and this and the other. Suddenly I got a headache or something when it's like that. I mean it. I literally avoid him. And a lot of us really feel it's almost like, you know, like when you walk into you ever visited somebody in jail or when you're visiting somebody in the hospital, you know how those places have a smell or a feeling and they make you, you don't feel right there. You don't, ugh, I don't want to be here. That's kind of how a lot of us look at our financial uh, world. And so what, what is it, would you say in your experiences, Sabrina, that makes so many of us so feel so intimidated in couples? It's usually one person's job. That ain't me. I don't like numbers. Get it out of here. What is that? Well, it's, it's our, our it's not, a lot of it is culture. In our household, we really didn't talk about money. My yeah. parents didn't talk about money and they never talked about salaries or anything like that or savings. or So we didn't get taught those principles. So money was like taboos, like, ooh, you know, you don't talk about money. And so it's kind of carried over into generation after generation. Why that do you think this that whole is? thing about money. Pardon me? Why do you think that is still? I don't know. It's still the same thing. People just don't. As a matter of fact, when I talk to some of my clients, first thing they say is, oh, I don't want to. I don't do money. I don't talk about money because I say, well, have you ever thought about being a financial coach? Oh, I'm not good with numbers. I'm not. You don't have to be good with numbers. This is about understanding the flow of money. It's about understanding, you know, how are you going to manage it? How are you going to save it? How are you going to live off of it? How are you going to retire on it? You, you need to know that when you think, Lauren. Well, yeah. So what's the difference between a financial advisor um, and a financial coach? Well, there's a big difference. If you're in a ring and you're boxing, do you want an advisor or a coach? Oh. Well, well. The reason, yeah. Okay, so a financial advisor, because I remember um, once upon a time, I tried to have one. I was, <laughs> I was in my 30s then, and I think it was through 
one of those mutual fund companies or something. And yes, I had a yes, financial yes. advisor and I, and they kind of just told me, yeah, you might want to put that in a CD or you might want to do that. They kind of led me in, 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 in on how to invest. Now a financial coach, what, what's your ideal client look okay, like? Okay. So here you go. So an advisor basically is going to instruct you on what you need to do, whether you understand it or not, you're going to take his advice and just do a it. coach ensures that you understand everything. You understand the play. You understand the products. You understand the end result. You understand where it's going to take you to the point that you're able to make the decision yourself. So that is the difference. And of course. So an advisor does it for you pretty much. Whereas pretty much. a coach shows you how to do it for yourself. So yes. instead of giving a man a fish, teach a man how to fish. Yes. Yes. Oh, and some of my, yeah. Got it. And some of my clients and, and, and it's clear this. Well, where's your money? Well, I don't know. Uh, I, I had it put here. Well, what what type of product? Well, I don't know. My advisor told me and I'm not knocking them because somebody some people need that. They don't want to understand it. They just want to be told what to do with it. What I do is we we do this thing together. And, and, and we simplify it so that you understand and you're participating in your financial future. Well, here's something I would think, tell me yes or no, but here we are inside of tax season, um, you know, which feels like a cuss word the minute it comes out of my mouth. Um, do you work with people um, on how to best file their taxes? Because a lot of us don't, especially those of us that work for ourselves. Uh, mm -hmm. miss a lot of benefit. So what about that aspect? Do you work with people on how to um, monetize everything that they have that they have at their fingertips? That's a great question. So I have referral partners. When it comes to taxes, I refer out to my referral partners. I'm not a tax advisor. Right. However, I have ran three to four businesses. I currently run my business and my husband's business. I do QuickBooks. I do everything right up to filing. And so I can give some armchair instructions and tell people what I do and different types of spreadsheets that I use. I'm yeah. willing to share those things. Um, I'm going to have really to ask you to watch your mouth on this show. This is a family show. And um, <laughs> no, Taxes. no spreadsheets. Oh, stop it. No, you stop it. I like that. <laughs> like, yeah, let's, it's just as a fair warning, let spreadsheets come out your mouth again. This is what's going to happen. Mess. I'm, clear. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But let's talk about that. Oh, I don't even. I don't even open. I'm just keeping it real. Somebody does, but I don't. Uh, I don't even open my. Oh, your online banking statement is ready when they send it. So, you know, I just ugh, you dip me in in lie first or something. Do you do you literally look at your bank statements every month? I do online banking, and I'm in my bank account weekly. Now, you know, here we go. Generations and culture. My mother refuses to do online banking. She will not do any, it. She still wants that paper statement. She sits um, at the dining room table. And yes. Yes. That's old school. I want to know minute by minute what's happening with my money. And so that's what I teach people. Get your arms around your money. And here's another reason why you want to do that. There's so much Internet. There's so much fraud out there electronically. By the time you find out it's too late, you know, yeah. when someone's gotten into your account. I'm going to tell you another thing, too. You're right. You're right. I just canceled a credit card because I've uh, done one of those subscription things, was trying a vitamin, and then didn't even realize that was two years ago. I wondered why they kept sending it. I was like, ooh, they done messed up and keep See? sending me all this free stuff. It's not free. And, and so you've got to watch that. You have to watch it. Well, Another thing, dollars a month. I I have I have a certain matrix set up on my account. If it goes below a certain amount, I get a buzz. If there's a, a purchase outside of the country, I get a buzz. So there are things that you can set up, mm. or if you get a deposit, I get a buzz or subtract. There's all kinds of things you can do to protect yourself. What's the number one thing that people? Uh, fall short on, in your opinion, that you that you work with to help them 
get it up to, to up to speed? What's the number one? Is it um, balancing their checkbook? Is it saving? What's the biggest thing that you get pushback on? I'm going to go saving and investing because that's two things because people think because they have a savings account, they're kind of like investing. Banks are paying like 0.2% interest. You're not making any money in a savings account. But what you are doing is allowing the bank to make money on your money. So take your money, save a little, invest a lot. That's what that's where people are falling short. And people do not have investment but, money. But a lot of people, when you say investment, you might as well, you know, I, as soon as you say investment, I pitch somebody going, all me. right, all right, Papa needs a no, new no, 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 no. set of shoes. You know, it let, me, like <laughs> let me explain that. For instance, with my grandkids, my my baby gift to them was an investment account. So $200, $250, I open up an investment account for them and $50 a month. So by the time they're 18 years old, they've got six figures in that account because it's it's, uh, it's being invested. So that's what we do. So it doesn't take a lot of money. Parents, families out there, you can start and they think when you say invest, but you got to have How's millions of dollars. How does an investment account work? Tell people how that works. It's simple. So you get with someone. Now, you, I don't have a security. Your bank? Pardon me? Do you do that at your bank? Where do you, where do you open an investment account? Oh, at? okay. Great. Good question. I would recommend having someone that has a securities license because you're, you're protected. They're governed by certain things. And they would tell you the different types of products out there. This is a pretty simple product. Um, you tell them what your threshold is, how much you can invest, how much you can start. You know, some of them start as little as fifty dollars. You can start there with fifty dollars and invest fifty dollars a month. That's affordable. Look, I'm spending forty dollars a month at Starbucks. Right. So when you have those accounts, what does it mean? You can't like go in it or is there a penalty when you go in it? How how do they keep you away from it? Because I'll good be question. Good question. Good question. You know, like, right. Well, they have something called surrender charges. So if you go in there and you start liquidating, then they penalize you. They're like spanking your hand. Don't do that. So the goal is to leave it in there for a period of time. Obviously, with most of those accounts, if there is a life threatening, genuine emergency uh, where you have to withdraw, there's uh, provisions in there where you can do that. Let's say you come down with a cancer, you got to have surgery. Yeah, you know, there are provisions. But it's not a swinging door. So, no, you're putting it in there to save for your future, your financial future. So, like, how many years are you agreeing to? I mean, how's that work? Five well, years? Well, some of the products, some of the, good question. Some of the products that I write, because I write retirement products, uh, 10 years. Those run, they, those are locked up anywhere between five to 10 years. Where now, again, if there's an emergency, yes. Also, another outing in some of those, Lauren, is that you have what they call a free withdrawal period. So every year you can withdraw 10% with no penalty. Okay. I hope so that's if you got to have it, you know, you can draw 10%. And what time of year is that when they let you do that? Does it oh, vary? Any time. No, anytime. Oh. It ain't Christmas time. <laughs> oh, so you, you choose. You choose. Yeah. You get that what? free withdrawal period. Yeah. And uh, 10%. Okay. What about now, this one? What about the person who I'll be 60 years old on the 4th of July? What about a person who's going to be 60? And let's say, because a lot of people, um, there are a lot of people whose lives turned around midway. So let's say they didn't care about that kind of stuff. Um, retirement, they didn't work a traditional job. They were trying to become a star or they were a dancer. Or they were some, you know, uh, they were, you know, creative, whatever the case may be. But now they're headed in the 40s, the 50s, the 60s. And they think, oh, I haven't been putting anything away for retirement. That's probably too late. Oh, well, is when is it too late to start socking away something for that that golden rainy day? Lauren, I'm going to give you an eye opener. We recommend when you're going to start retirement plans that it's usually between the ages of like 40 to 60. So you're right. That's right. Because what happens when you're in your 20s and 30s, we recommend that you be heavy into the investing side. Because, you know, if, if the market's up or down, you know, it takes 10 years, five to 10 years to recover. So you you have wiggle room in there. But the older you get, the safer you want your money to be. 
right? Because you don't, you and I, we don't want to be risking right now. So right. you're at a good age to start your retirement plan. You know, you figure you still got a lot of life in you. I see you doing bathroom moments for the next five, 10 years. So you're going to be doing this thing. Five or um, 10? Yeah. No. I'm a black male version of Betty White. God rest her soul. Listen, and Betty White was still out there, okay? I ain't playing with it. She was still out there. I'm going to be, I will be like Uncle Pete. What? Soul food. Remember the old man they keep upstairs in the room? I don't care. Just as long as I ain't in the nursing home. You say that, but you know what? You have so much in you. You ain't going nowhere. So I I see you now. I I see you now setting that up, setting up your, they call it self-funded pension plan. I see you oh, setting that up now. Oh, trust me. Dr. Brian made sure I didn't, I'm gonna keep it real. I did not. Uh, when we first met, uh, nine, nine years ago, I didn't, but he got me straight with it real quick. You know, that's what you um, need to do. Mm-hmm, but that's, that's why I speak to that because I really did think it was too late in my biggest, I'm gonna tell you what my biggest challenge was and it still is when it's in my hand because i try to start little side things without him knowing just to say look what i did you know <laughs> or, so let's go here on my uh online banking they have like a reserve account and, th- and it's fine and i'll put 500 in there i'll put a thousand in there and and it'll sit there but what 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 they shouldn't do they should make it where you can turn that account incognito where because if i didn't see it pop up every time i'd leave it alone i'd forget about it that so I, I get you with the other accounts, and I'm like, can't y'all turn that one off? Can't you like, you know, incognito move it? They're like, no, that's just the way it's set up. So, what is this mindset thing that it you think is burning a hole in your pocket? How do you get around that? Because that's what gets most of us. We 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 think like, oh, well, I just touch a little, you know, no. I, and the next you know it's gone. Well, I'll tell you some of the things I've discovered, and that's a great point. I'm glad you brought that up. I have met more people that because of the pandemic, they lost their jobs and they had a 401k. The minute they got their hands on the 401k money, what do you think happened? They spent it. Start spending it. They told themselves they needed it, but they didn't need it when they were working. But once see, it's, it's once I see it, I know it's there. It's almost bothering you. You know, it's like somebody elbowing is bothering. You start, you start spending it. Because the I just the idea of knowing it's there, the same thing with you. And I tell people, you gotta Thanks. distance yourself. Distance yourself. So this is what I tell myself. If I can't, if I, I don't even think about that money. I say, I'm, I don't have any money. I don't have any money is what I'll say. I don't. Have, when I've run out of my operating money, the household money, I've got money here, but to me, I don't have any money. We have to wait for the next pay period. You know what my husband does? He think I don't. He doesn't think I know. What? I, what he does he always tricks me he always goes well you better cut down because he, he's one of those people he likes to pay all our credit card bills off to zero every month i like it every single his parents on that every no matter what and let me like there was a one of our credit cards i paid all but like 800 of it last month I was like i picked that up next month <laughs> two days later i got the ding on the phone where he does send it in i was like you know but that's a mindset it's a that mindset. he just has always had, which is why, you know, uh, we're so different. But my point is this. So if a person comes to you, okay, because here's another thing. What's the difference between what you do and those mm-hmm. people that you see on LinkedIn and different places that say financial literacy? I teach financial literacy. And I see, I don't understand what that actually looks like. Lauren, I'm with you on that. So before I became a financial coach, I ran for people like that because I didn't I didn't understand. What is financial literacy? I didn't get it. What are you talking about? What are, can you explain that to me? And I actually asked a couple of them. And they really couldn't give me a clear answer. Oh, I'm so glad it's not just me. No, I'm like, what do you do? I don't, that doesn't work. See, I'm just not wired for that stuff. See, oh, I can't let anybody know this. And I think that happens to more of us than we admit to. So, I, I'm saying it, and I'm a college degree woman, and I didn't even understand what that what financial literacy meant. Uh, we need to break that down in lamest terms. What do you do? 
you know, rather than have. So I teach people how to get their arms around their money. I yes, teach before. Yes. Get what your does arms that mean? Around. It's like embracing. It means it. embracing. It, see, when you don't have your arms around it, it's everywhere. It's all over. If you can't hold it here, that means you don't have control. So I teach people how to have control, really a mindset. It's a money mindset. You know, we're in a, we're in a um, earn spin cycle. So we make money. It's some, oftentimes, Lord, it's already spent. Ah, by the time I get this check, I'm going to spend it on this. I'm going to spend it on that. Oh, I used to be think? like that. It'd be yeah. gone before I got it. It's like when people, when you're on a diet, and you start and you see something somewhere, you go, I ain't, no, or this one, where you know good and well. Oh, say there's a bowl of candy corn, which is my Halloween candy of choice. <laughs> so, and you go, I learned this lesson. If I at the beginning of the holiday of Halloween season, to like, oh, I'll just eat one. I'll just eat a cup. I just eat one of them pumpkin things because I love them too at the doctor's office or wherever. I end up eating five times the amount by the time Halloween is gone. So what I do is I go straight to the grocery store as soon as they put that stuff out and get a whole one of them one pound bags of candy corn and sit there and gorge myself till I'm like, my eyes are like this from sugar. You because just now I'm going to one of these for another year. Oh, <laughs> but, but I have to do that, Sabrina, because I know I have to be so honest with myself for the greater good. It was better to just eat this and risk getting sick and be sick of it than stretching it out and lying to yourself and doing four times the damage. Now, take that and apply it to how we deal with our finances, with touching stuff we shouldn't touch. What do we do then? Because I was so bad when I was younger in my 20s, I really tried to save on Fridays. I would literally mail cash to me on Friday to make sure I didn't spend it at the clubs and stuff before Monday. So here, I'm, here, here's some help. Here's some help. I'm going to help you. You can set up some automatic things in your accounts and with your money. Because most of us now, I don't know how many people get paper checks anymore. I don't know if anybody's doing oh. that. Most places get electronic. You know, you get it direct deposit. Right, so right. set up something, some electronic things in place. You can do it if you're at work. They'll do that for you. They'll, mm -hmm. They can dice your check up, some in a checking, some in savings. Also, automatic contributions to your 401k. If mm -hmm. you don't have those things in place, you can set it up at your own bank where you have automatic withdrawals or you, you teach yourself. I'm in business for myself. I'm a 1099, Lauren. So I have to discipline myself yeah. when I get when my money hits my account. I take a third out, put it in savings, a third out, put it in operating. Another third out and set it aside for taxes. Wait. I'm going to have to pay Uncle Sam. Wait, 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 wait. You're saying every time, as an entrepreneur, every time some money comes, you you do that each time. I divvy it up. Oh, so I'm gonna, I, listen, listen. That come, I'm going to keep that it real with you. Because it comes. I'm just keep it real with you. Because it that comes helps. every day. Every day. Oh. Right. And so I'm just like, it's a big old swimming pool full of money. Um, It's mine. You see what I'm saying? Right. But I'm not paying attention to, and I hate that thing they have on online banking. That Here's what you spend on shopping. Here's yes. what you spend on groceries. Ain't nobody asked you. You know, well, <laughs> sometimes when I do write, I like it because it keeps me on track. But when I'm guilty of not giving a damn, which is most of the time, those things kind of like poke at me. So how do we turn those things into friends instead of foes? Because they're there to help me. But I feel like they, they're trying to tell me what to do. Lauren, they're just trying to help you. They're telling you where your money's going. It's, now, in your oh, case. Oh, 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 wait. I know what it is. Tell Because you're a mindset coach too, right? Yes. I mean, you're a life coach, right? Certified. I'm a life coach. coach. Here's, here's, what, here's what I think. This is what Brian tells me, my husband. He's a therapist. He tells me, Lauren, a lot of that is based on your previous scarcity mindset. That how, you know, like people who grow up in a family with a lot of kids eat real fast because they say they had to eat or whoever was done first was the only one to get seconds. Could be way too long and none going to be left. And they still been out of the house 30, 40 years. They still eat really fast. So could it be that I'm like that because I was hand to mouth for so many decades? It's culture. It is culture and it's, it's your upbringing 
has a lot to do with how you respond to those things. See, for you, it's almost annoying to get those dings and pings and all of those things telling you what you're doing. You don't want that. It's like, hey, I got this money. I'm happy to have it. You know, that's what you, that's so for you. And a lot of people are like that. They don't like all those notifications and things like that. But I want to say for you, if you're getting money in your account daily and you, you got a great look, you got a great financial advisor in your own house. Well, I ain't no big amounts, but, you know, I work with people. I, you know, I mean, I'm like what I, I everything I do with people transactionally, I want our our experience to be um, joyful. I want it to pour into them. And so if somebody, so I break things up a lot, which means it's, so it ain't, I ain't talking no big old chunks, but there's always something, you know, kind of stri yeah. trickling in, trickling in. Now, only because I'm getting older and I don't want to forget this because I really want to know, because I'm trying to still understand a lot about myself. So Sabrina, in your opinion, do you think, um, Here's another thing I think too, why it's hard for me to save, honestly. And and and, and this is real because I'm not the only one. You know, for so many decades, I didn't think I would be alive at this age. You know, I had a 14 year drug addiction. You know, I had all those things that, that, you know, they put into me in foster care and all that stuff in the systems that kind of didn't, it's not like you're, like you said, culturally, I wasn't groomed to believe in a future that would last this long. And I still kind of believe like sometimes I save or look at saving from that mindset of living on borrowed time. Talk about that. Mm, you know, I kind of get that because my husband's that way too. He, he lives for the moment. He lives for today. And, and you're like that because to you, it's like, I don't know if I have a future. It and you're hard actually he, now that I'm he, saying it out loud. I can see that. I can see it. You kind of went somewhere when you said that. It yeah. brought some feelings up. Yeah. Yeah. Because I remember, you know, not so long ago, really just thinking, you know, well, why should I say I'm not going to be alive? You know, why should I say for those things that go with retirement? Nobody's going to want me. I, I mean, I really thought that for like 35 years. So. I can't be the only one. Have you ever encountered those kinds of things with people you work with? Uh, I have. It's self-worth. And you had a problem with self-worth. And so you didn't no. think you were worthy. Ring no. that bell. Self-worth. No, I didn't. I didn't. I do now. But could my, uh, the lens that I look at those things like investments and savings, yes. retirement, still be connected to, hey, wake up. You're still alive and you're still living. You know. Because just like when we're young, we think, oh, I'll wait till this too early. That's going to be forever. And next thing you know, you're there. The uh, tell me about it. 40 and you haven't started. Right? That makes sense. And so feeling worthy. And uh, one of the reasons why I started late is I didn't feel worthy, not for the same reasons you did. I just didn't, you know, because we didn't talk about money. I didn't think I was worthy. I didn't think I... I deserved a retirement. I know, you know, I thought that was for a certain class of people. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. The upper class. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I qualified that to be that person, to live a retired life and be living in the house or condo of my dreams, driving a car I wanted to drive and not work. Right. I didn't think I was worthy. You right. didn't think you were worthy. You just nope. thought, hey, this is my lifestyle, so I don't deserve that. And you still kind of hang on to that now. You know, with some of your thinking. I do. It was really bad. Honestly, when I first uh, met my husband, uh, he lived here in Illinois. I lived in Michigan, but we that's how we met. He would come through my town to go to his lake house. And I remember the first time he brought me there. Um, I stepped, you know, the garage opens, you go into the kitchen from there. I didn't even get past the stairs that went upstairs. And I just sat down and I broke down. Um, cause I didn't feel worthy of being in the, I was like, this isn't same thing when I bought my first car that wasn't ever used by anybody. Um, I'm on my second one now, but the first one, uh, six years ago, Brian, I'll tell you, he left, um, and, um, uh, cause he dropped me off there and then left and was like, 
I thought you were going to be like an hour. Where are you? It was like three hours later. I was still sitting in the Bobo dealership parking lot because I thought they were going to, I was scared to leave because I really thought they were going to come running out there and saying, it's a mistake. Give us back our car. Or the police were going to pull me over on the way home. Like, what are you doing in that car that you don't belong in? And, you know, it wasn't just that part, but it was also, you know, there was a brief period when I was really successful when I was younger with apology acceptance stuff. And I had a luxury car and I got pulled over all the time. Because they didn't think I belonged in it. We're checking out a stolen car thing. What they do, <laughs> driving while black. Driving while black. Yeah, and they call so, it DWB. Yeah, right. So many different things, okay? But it's, I just, it's interesting. And I want to tell, ask you about this last piece. Because I wrote down, culturally, another piece that a lot of us dropped the ball on. How many people do we know? And it's not just black people. I know I have a client, she's white as can be. And the same thing just happened in her family a few weeks ago. Someone passed away and they could not bury the person. They had to do fundraisers and things. Talk about how important it is to plan for that will. When you start investing and doing these things, how do you tie those things into a will? Life insurance policies, all of that kind of stuff. Hit that for the, take us out on that. If I'm going to take you down that road because listen, I just did this for myself about five years ago. Okay. I was in the same boat because nobody taught me. Once I became licensed as a financial coach, I realized the value. So I have a will. I have life insurance. I have investments. I've properly set up the proper beneficiaries for those things. I have a safety deposit box at the bank okay. uh, because people get, they can't find your documents. Nobody knows where Sabrina's will. And by the way, don't do these, uh, you know, office depot staples. Will a good enforceable will have, should be drawn up by an attorney mm. because otherwise it can be challenged in court. Mm -hmm. So you want to have a will that's, and it doesn't cost that much, but get an attorney to draw up your will. You have to have, you know, um, notarized signatures, things of that nature. Your life insurance policy. Okay. My brother-in-law was 40 years old when he died, didn't have life insurance. We had to do a GoFundMe. And all of us, we're an educated family. That's right. He, he, he had a seizure at work and died. And he shouldn't have died at 40. That's a different story. But boy, didn't we all learn a lesson about that. Mm. You've got to depend on the general public to bury your loved ones. Get a life insurance policy. Back in the day, I don't know about you, well, you, you had 22 moms, but my mom. Both of my moms. They did? They bought yeah. life insurance? Okay. Yep, the man would come to the house. Thank you. Would come to the house, and my mom would go in there. My adopted mom would go in there and pay him. And it, it would come like on Fridays and pick Same up that premium, do something in her little booklet, and leave. And See? my birth mom, when I met her, I was 32, the, the 32 years later, was still doing the same thing. A man See? came to the house, right? And he'd been with her for 30 years. See, that's what I'm talking about. The man came, and we were in a black neighborhood. This white guy would come to our house. Yep. Mama would make that payment. She had life insurance on all of us. You know, mama knew better. Somebody educated them way back then. But I think this is what happened. They bought the life insurance on us. So we were just like, Ooh, carte blanche, let's go. We got out on our own. We didn't buy life insurance. I've had life insurance for my job, but I never thought about having it on my kids and, you know, all of that. Yeah. And then once I left the corporate world and I was on my own, I'm like, well, I don't have life insurance. And uh, so I got educated on that. So if something happens to me, house is paid off. Nobody's going to lose anything. You know, I can leave a legacy for my kids. Lauren, here's another thing as a legacy. You know, we read about millionaires and billionaires and they're leaving legacies to their children because they had a nice life insurance policy. What are you leaving your kids? What kind of legacy? Or are you just going to leave a burden? So now they got to go do a GoFundMe just to bury you. Well, and I want to throw something in on this because I saw this twice in my birth family and my adopted family. And the adopted family is like your family, one of those educated families mm -hmm. where all my siblings um, I'm the only one who doesn't have a college degree. They all have like multiple master's degrees. And I mean, just like crazy, <laughs> right? Um, and all their kids and all their kids. It's just like that. And the other side of the family is a little different. But the thing was, is, as soon as both of those women died, the family was families were torn asunder. Oh, it was all over stuff. It was all over stuff. 
What can we do financially to make sure? Because what people don't do is they may even start with a will, but they don't update it. As people come in and out, the person you left it to might have died before you. And then, you know, there's all kinds of things. So I think you're right on. Definitely. Yes. To yes. Go to the attorney. But Sabrina, to, just to get an idea and an understanding of all the different roadways of financial freedom, um, I think a coach would be great because at least they can help talk you to the place you need to go to, to go now and get that investment person, like the referrals that you give people, just to help them understand where they're at, where they want or need to be, right? And how That's long does a person yes. typically work with you before they're all? Oh, well, I would probably say a couple of months. I mean, once we, I coach them, I understand, you know, what is their vision? And I kind of pull in a few things they haven't talked about and I get them going. And then they're always connected to me because Let's say if they do a life insurance and now they're going to have a baby. So mm -hmm. now you want to add your baby. Mm -hmm. uh, they may have a tax tax question. I have referral partners. I have people with securities license. I have people that do taxes. I have people that do wills. So I'm kind of like a one stop. You're my client. This is a relationship. It's a long term relationship, Lauren, because you know what? Like you said, life changes. Mm -hmm. Even a divorce. I'm just going through divorce now uh, with some clients and Ooh, that gets dicey, but I have to do certain things. Yes. I have yes. to do I gotta take people off and add people on, you know. So they're lost. Oh. So you're see. And here's something I gotta do too, because I meant to do it before, but I forgot. And we only got a couple minutes left. You guys, Sabrina is also um uh like the lead co-host on a wonderful show um by the name of Thriving Women Talk, found over on the E360 network network on a specific channel known as Thriving Women's Network. So I wanted to show you a little bit about that. And then when we come back from this, Sabrina is going to tell you where you can watch the show. And then we'll go ahead and get started on our work day. <laughs> Thriving Women Talks. Yay. Ring the bell. Tell everybody what day they can catch that and uh, what it's all about. Yes, that is every Tuesday, 12 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time to 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And you can catch that on E360 TV. That's E360 Yay. TV. And we're going to see you there. Yep. When is that? You're today. Today. That's what I heard. You're supposed, to pop in. You're supposed to pop in for about five minutes or so. At noon, at, at 11 East, at 11 my time? 11 CST. And you said oh. last week, you were you said yeah, not. Is, remember that? See? Okay. All righty. Well, that's it. That's what I'll. That's, that's a wrap on that. We will. <laughs> so catch Lauren Michael Harris on Thriving Women Talk today, 12 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time on E360 TV. Awesome. Awesome. And you guys really think about uh, hitting up Sabrina if just to have a little discovery call to find out. I'm going to set up something with her because I want uh, to pry into your world and ask you what I where I can go to get some insight on how, how not to be afraid to address the will issue. I mean, we have them, but there's that thing, this fear of why am I talking about that? You know what I mean? Uh, uh, uh. It can be a little uncomfortable. And pre-planning. 
like your funeral yes. and all that kind of stuff. I Pre-nay. think that's all a part of what you do. I think it's prenups. Be- I want to throw that out there too. Prenups. Yeah, we'll talk absolutely. about that another time. Got to have it. to the tuna from the <laughs> that's cradle right. to the grave. Right, from the cradle to the grave. There you that's go. Right. Serena Protic, thank you so much, you guys. On the screen, scrolling along the bottom, you'll see um, the www.sabrinaprotic.com. That's where you can go and find out all the things. There's things about books. There's programs. There's all kinds of wonderful things. Head over and say hello. And Sabrina, I want to thank you for joining us here today and pouring into us, uh, being vulnerable and sharing and showing your soul. And I hope we poured a little bit back into your world. And that goes for all of y'all out there, too. Listen, uh, tomorrow, uh, oh, it's Ask the Experts. Um, three of our four experts will be here. Dominique Rivera is out the Oracle. She's on the road, but the other three will be here. So join us tomorrow. Tracy Randolph, the reset coach, Tim Chung, the mindset coach. And of course, badass yacht. That's how she says it. Jamie Lane. She's unapologetically feminist. She'll be here as well. And I hope you will join us out front on the front porch, 8 a.m. Central to do it all again for our next installment of Bathroom Moments. Thank you again, Sabrina. Be the blessing you want to receive in the world. Anything you got before we leave? Just sharing some love. Love all of you. Stay tuned. Bathroom Moments are wonderful show. Love it. All right. Don't forget, today at noon, Thriving Women Talk, head over to E360.com, and I'll meet you there. Bye, everybody. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Oh